In the previous video, I told everyone the story of the first empress in Chinese history, Lu Xi, during the first half of her life. Today, I will continue to tell you her legendary life story. When Liu Bang became the emperor, his wife, Lu Xi, became the empress, and their child Liu Ying became the crown prince, it seemed like Lu Xi had already achieved everything she desired. However, at this time, someone challenged her position, and that someone was Lady Qi, the most favored woman by Liu Bang. Lady Qi also had a son with Liu Bang, named Liu Rui. Liu Bang was very fond of this child and often said that this child resembled him in both appearance and character. He did not like his own heir, Liu Ying, who was born to Liu Xi. Liu Bang believed that Liu Ying was relatively weak in character, but this wasn't really Liu Ying's fault. His most memorable interaction with his father might not have been his father's approval but rather when his father pushed him and his sister off a carriage to escape for his life. As the mother of Liu Rui, who was the most beloved child of Liu Bang, Lady Qi believed that as long as she continued to implore Liu Bang, he would eventually soften his heart and agree to her request to make her son Liu Rui the crown prince. Day after day, Liu Bang did indeed entertain the idea of changing the crown prince. However, every time he raised the idea of deposing the current crown prince, many ministers opposed it. This was because Empress Lu Xi held a very high position in their hearts, and they believed that her son should be the future emperor. Lu Xi is known for her roles in the deaths of Han Xin and Peng Yu, two of Liu Bang's subjects who contributed greatly to the founding of the Han Dynasty, of whose military capabilities both Xi and her husband had been apprehensive. In 196 BC, Liu Bang left the capital Chang'an to suppress a revolt in Julu started by Chen Shi, the Marquess of Yangxia. A year before, Chen Shi met Han Xin before departing from Chang'an, and it was alleged that Han Xin was involved in the rebellion. Liu Xi became wary of Han Xin, and after consulting the Chancellor Xiao He, she had Xiao summon Han to meet her in Chang'e Palace. There, the Empress had Han Xin taken by surprise, captured, and subsequently executed in a torturous manner. Liu Xi also ordered Han Xin's family and relatives to be put to death as well. When Liu Bang was putting down Chen Shi's revolt, he requested reinforcements from Peng Yu but the latter claimed that he was ill and sent his subordinates to assist Liu Bang instead. After Chen Shi's rebellion was quelled, Liu Bang heard rumors that Peng Yu was plotting against him too, and he had Peng arrested and stripped of his titles. Peng was demoted to the status of a commoner and exiled to the remote Qingyi County. During his journey to Qingyi, Peng Yu encountered Lu Xi, who wanted to have him killed. He pleaded with her to spare his life and let him return to his hometown in Chang'e, and the Empress pretended to agree. Peng Yu was brought to Luoyang, where he was subsequently executed on false charges of treason. Lu Xi ordered Peng Yu's body to be mutilated and had Peng's clan exterminated as well. Let's turn our attention back to the inheritance dispute during the Han Dynasty. Empress Lu observed her and her son's precarious position and grew very concerned. She sent her brother to find Zhong Liang, hoping he could offer some assistance. Zhong Liang was one of the strategists who helped Liu Bang establish the Han Dynasty and was known for his wisdom. He suggested there were four elderly individuals living in seclusion on Mount Shong, whom Liu Bang greatly desired to have as his aides. However, these four individuals believed that Liu Bang displayed too much arrogance towards his ministers, so they consistently declined his requests. If Empress Liu could find a way to convince these four individuals to assist Crown Prince Liu Ying, perhaps Liu Bang would reconsider his stance. Empress Liu adopted Zhong Liang's advice and, with utmost humility, invited the four whiteheads of Mount Shong to help the Crown Prince. The four men promised to assist Liu Ying in the future if he became emperor and Liu Bang was pleased to see that Liu Ying had their support. He told Lady Qi, I wanted to replace the crown prince. Now I see that he has the support of those four men, he is fully fledged and difficult to unseat. Empress Liu is really in charge. This marked the end of the dispute over the succession and affirmed Liu Ying's role as crown prince. In June of the year 195 BC, Liu Bang passed away, and his successor, Liu Ying, assumed the title of Emperor Hui of Han in historical records. Empress Lu Xi was granted the esteemed position of Empress Dowager by Emperor Hui. During her son's reign, she wielded greater influence than during her own time as Empress, emerging as a formidable and influential figure at the helm of his administration. 
Lu Xi refrained from harming most of Liu Bang's other consorts and adhered to the established rules and traditions of the imperial family in her treatment of them. For example, consorts who bore male children who were instated as princes were granted the title of Princess Dowager in their respective son's principalities. However, there was one notable exception in the case of Lady Qi, whom Lu Xi held deep resentment towards due to the succession dispute involving Lu Rui and Liu Ying. Since Liu Rui, the Prince of Zhao, was absent in his principality, Lu Xi directed her actions towards Lady Qi. She had Qi stripped of her position, subjected her to harsh treatment akin to that of a convict, head shaved, in stocks, dressed in prison garb, and compelled her to engage in strenuous labor, such as rice milling. Lu Xi then summoned Liu Rui, who was around the age of 12, to Chang'an, intending to kill him together with his mother. However Zhu Chang, the chancellor in Liu Rui's principality, whom Lu Xi respected because of his stern opposition to Liu Bang's proposal to make Liu Rui crown prince, temporarily protected Liu Rui from harm by responding to Lu Xi's order that, the prince of Zhao is ill and unfit for traveling over long distances. Lu Xi then ordered Zhu Chang to come to the capital, had him detained, and then summoned Liu Rui again. Emperor Hui tried to save Liu Rui by intercepting his half-brother before the latter entered Chang'an, and kept Liu Rui by his side most of the time. Liu Xi refrained from carrying out her plans for several months because she feared that she might harm Emperor Hui as well. One morning in the winter of 195 to 194 BC, Emperor Hui went for a hunting trip and did not bring Liu Rui with him because the latter refused to get out of bed. Lu Xi's chance arrived, so she sent an assassin to force poisoned wine down Liu Rui's throat. The young prince was dead by the time Emperor Hui returned. Lu Xi then had Lady Qi killed in an inhumane manner. She had Qi's limbs chopped off, eyes gouged out, ears sliced off, nose sliced off, tongue cut out, forced her to drink a potion that made her mute and had her thrown into a latrine. She called Qi a human swine. Several days later, Emperor Hui was taken to view the human swine and was shocked to learn that it was Lady Qi. He cried loudly and became ill for a long time. He requested to see his mother and said, this is something done not by a human. As the Empress Dowager's son, I'll never be able to rule the empire. From then on, Emperor Hui indulged himself in carnal pleasures and ignored state affairs, leaving all of them to his mother, and this caused power to fall completely into her hands. In 191 BC, at Lu Xi's insistence, Emperor Hui married his niece Zhong Yang, who was his sister Princess Lu Yuan's daughter and made her empress. They did not have any children. It was alleged that Lu Xi told Zhong Yang to adopt eight boys and have their mothers killed. Emperor Hui died in 188 BC and was succeeded by Emperor Qin Chao, one of the children Empress Zhong adopted. Empress Dowager Lu closely monitored and controlled the imperial court and kept the whole army firmly in her hands, thus maintaining power more strongly than before. His death and the succession of an immature child left power completely and solely in the hands of Empress Dowager Lu, and as a regent, legitimized her as the first female absolute ruler in Chinese history to do so exclusively.